Thank you, Nord, for the money thing. <sighs> yeah, I know. Before even starting, I know. I know. Now, before I can explain this, I have to preface this with a preface for the preface. Bro, my ancestor is punching the air right now. See, the story I'm about to tell you was actually a story I had on this channel for a while until YouTube said nah. So you had some choice words in the title. I didn't know there were so many bad F words. I thought it was just the two, but it learned something new every day. So I thought I would try a much less scathing word. Maybe just a little less scathing. Now, I know what y'all are thinking, all right? And I have no explanation, to be honest. It is as bad as it sounds, and I, there's, I can't defend any of this. But it wasn't like I woke up one day and was like, man, I'm really trying to smash a Karen. Like there was a buildup to this. So I figured the best thing to do is just start the story and then maybe explain to you how I got in this situation and then fill you in as we go. Okay, all right, we're gonna do that. Okay, so during my junior year of college, I'd frequent this bar with my friends pretty often. It was called Score, which was a mighty ironic name because that was something I never ever did when I was at that place. Yo, not a home run, no touchdowns, missing free throws. I was getting set by Kageyama set up perfectly and I'm like hitting them back into our court. And what's wild is I was doing this all on purpose and that's because i got into this whole ordeal i'm not gonna get into right now with the girl be named uh, the girl who shan't be named she f my roommate also there was a whole other girl was a whole other thing i'm not gonna get into who will call ma'am did you give me an std she almost gave me a fing STD. I have a three part series on them. Y'all, yeah, watch that, but not right now. Do that later. Some more stuff happened that will be a future video. Blah, blah, blah. But that led me to a point where I was no longer taking girls back to my crib to sleep together. I was bringing them back to sleep together. Like, just like normal sleep, like, like cuddling, like reverse Uno card my whole face. You know what I mean? Like, usually in bar culture, girls are usually disappointed when they get uh, not enough of the thing that they're after versus in this case where they will be getting zero which in retrospect sounds wholesomely wild i was so traumatized that it left me with an emptiness and i felt unwanted i need to fill the void but because of the trauma i went through i wasn't really trying to fill in that you know no more like i'm good for right now which i feel like is understandable and reasonable for someone who's been through a situation like that the trauma makes them want to connect with someone so knowing all that what the f does that have to do with wanting to date a racist i don't <laughs> i gotta keep going with the story for you to get it all right just bear with me so whenever i'd go to score i'd always run into familiar faces but one that always stood out was this girl who we'll call holly one because me and her had met through a mutual friend that she was actually into at the time so we were kind of loosely connected and two, because we were loosely connected. Look, I, I, I'm a lonely introvert. I've said this, this is established. Like, I need to be met halfway here at the social gatherings. So every time I saw her there, I always made it a thing to go talk to her. And she seemed like a normal girl. She hung out with normal people, she had normal conversations, all that jazz. Uh, seemed being the operative word to focus on here. Now, one Friday, maybe a few hours before my sad weekly ritual, my friend Matt hits me up asking, yo, do you know the name of the girl who only dates black guys? Oh, what a way to start the day. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure who he was talking about because whenever I'm at school, I barely know who I am. Like I know the people, but I'm not gonna know them by action description. But then he said something that really caught my attention. Well, you guys usually interact all the time at score, which immediately narrowed down the pool. I didn't usually continue to hang out with girls who became my cuddling victims. So the only girl left that I casually hung out with was Holly. But I'm not 100% sure on this. All right, like again, Holly seemed normal from what I could tell. So I figured I'll talk to her that night at the bar and gauge it myself. Now I had to score as per usual and naturally she's there hanging out. Now pause, I'm gonna be real with y'all. My memory blanks here. I do not remember what happened that got me from point A to point B but what I do know is at one point I went in questioning if she just kind of only messed with black dudes to very aggressively dancing with her on the dance floor. Yeah, whether I was intoxicated with loneliness or with alcohol, this is where we ended up. And as we're dancing, I catch Matt in the corner of my eye with his hand up pointing at me, which I thought was a hella weird greeting. Like who points at someone to wave like, yo, there's like a wave, the classic head nod. Then all of a sudden, everything hits me. He wasn't pointing at me. He was pointing 
at her. And then everything clicked. Yo, that group she's usually in, full of a bunch of black dudes. When she's usually dancing, she's dancing with a black dude. And I realized that mutual friend she was into, also black. Holy crap basket. And I go to a mostly white school. This girl really does exclusively mess with black guys, which is, well, racist. <laughs> See, let me explain. First things first, what's happening here is this thing called fetishizing. And fetishizing by definition is a form of sexual desire in which gratification is linked to an abnormal degree to a particular object like or item or, or piece of clothing, body part, you know, a thing. And sometimes this fetishizing occurs to actual people. And that's not particularly wrong. Like some people just into some freaky stuff. Uh, it only gets wrong when you start fetishizing particular things like race meaning you can go ahead drop the e and add the ist uh that can lead to some very racist behavior now please i'm not an expert on this so please don't hold me to that standard kind of just filling out my way here but you might be thinking well that's not racism like it's actually pretty nice uh <laughs> that's the problem fun fact racism can sometimes come at an angle of a positive connotation usually this is considered liberal racism like thinking all black dudes have big hands the best example i can think of is like the movie get out you know the movie where the white people were trying to get inside the black people because they thought they were superior uh, th th like that's kind of whack and i guess in this case it's the white people wanting the black people in that mm, my bad i'm it was right there i'm sorry bailey you're not being seen for the person you are but for desirable traits that are stereotypical for your people. Now, I'm not talking about preference necessarily. I do believe that exists. That's a whole different video to argue about. But when you're just seen for your race, then ethically, that's wrong. You're being dehumanized as a person for someone's sexual gratification. So that was the trick. I stopped dancing with her, took a step back, turned her around, looked her in the eyes, and brought her back to my house. Yeah. Yeah, um, finally it looks like we're getting to the reasoning for that title. I kind of wanted to be fetishized. Yo, all the pseudo intellectualism I just spit aside, bro. <laughs> someone wants me sexually for their gratification. That's you. We could just stop there and I was cool with it. I'm about to get real ignorant now. Ancestors really, really punched in the air. What I was looking for was attention. Someone wanting me, someone wanting to desire your boy. Like bro, being someone's fetish sounded dope. It sounds dope on paper. Like I don't care if you treat me like an object. That's hot. Yeah, hello. Like people breaking wedding vows all the time, but who breaking a fetish vow? Like, you know what will never let me down? Someone in a latex suit. Who's Who's topping that? And albeit a weird place, I was interested in being that for someone. That unconditional want. I don't know. It was a very weird line for me. Anyways, homeboy was fully prepared to be a whole table for, for someone. So it's fine. So as you'd expect, I took her back to my place. And besides, she's still a normal person. Like, I doubt she's going to say anything weird or anything now that we're in the situation. So, you know, whatever. So we're in my bed and we're just talking. I'm very interested in seeing where this is going. And then she does something particular kind of like just out of the blue she asked me about rappers hmm that felt weird now in any circumstance this isn't an odd topic especially this one i mean i have a bunch of rappers next to my bed that is definitely a reasonable conversation topic considering the posters i had but being in the situation made me feel a little odd but you know it was whatever not a big deal i literally signed on for this so as we continue the cuddle conversation then leads to us talking about drinking we're talking about our favorite drinks and she tells me <laughs> my favorite drink is hennessy that that feels weird that feels weird okay now for some of you who don't know hennessy is a stereotypical black alcoholic drink which again isn't weird it's not weird but it's a weird thing to bring up after what was just brought up i don't know but what am i complaining about i know what i'm dealing with here right so it's fine but did feel weird that did feel weird so do you play basketball <sighs> i'm not liking how this feels now again to be fair i am an athlete at the school yes she probably saw my athletic bag by the bed and and you know asked me if i play basketball but i was like man that's the that's the third kind of Questionable question you asked me though. That's not to say it's not like a normal question. And I didn't know what I might have been getting into, but this wasn't, it wasn't, it was felt a lot. It was felt a little odd. But then I thought to myself, why even front? This is what you wanted, right? She's interested in you. 
just happens to be with some questions that I'm now realizing are making me feel really weird. I was like, it's fine. It's fine. It felt a lot weirder than I thought it was going to be, but it was fine. It was fine. It's not weird at all. This is what you wanted, Kurt. This is what you wanted. It's not like she's going to do something that's going to make me so weird that I, I disconnect from the whole idea entirely. Obviously, thought too soon. While we're talking and discussing, homegirl opens up her phone and I see her lock screen. And what's there is just a black guy. It's just a, just a light skinned black guy. He's not famous. He's not a viral sensation. He's not like a YouTuber. It's just a good looking light skinned dude on her lock screen. Now it was weird. Now it was weird. I don't know, that was the last straw for me, okay? Like usually the things people put on their lock screens are things they're really into. Like I like Persona 5, so I had Persona 5 as my lock screen at some point for like months. And apparently she liked black guys, so she had black guys as her lock. <laughs> yeah. And at that point, maybe that was the shock that put it into me, but I was like, no matter how lonely I am, this will always be weird. This will be weird. It's weird. I feel weird now. Really felt like to her, I was just a check off list of just things and not a person, which was wild and really on me because I put myself in this position. I realized that that pain I was going through was not just wanting to be wanted, but wanting to be wanted for me, not just to be desired, especially in this sense. So she left in the morning and I'm feeling all types of ways. She's the most cookie cutter black fetishizer I've ever seen. I wanted that and then got upset when it was bad. Like, it was like literally the hot stove analogy. I had to touch it to realize that was hot. It was hot and a little racist. And, and the biggest irony of all was I got a text a little later from Mark that said, I'm guessing you got her name. I type it in, Holly. He just responds, LOL. <sighs> Moral of the story. And I feel like this is obvious being objectified isn't cool <laughs> who would have thought if anything there's probably a deeper message in here maybe one that's more for me than for the internet if anything it's that it's okay to want to be wanted if you've been hurt or traumatized by something that's now missing in your life like that's natural but wanting to be wanted just because there's something missing is not healthy especially when it comes at any cost why be treated like an object when i could be treated like a person despite how hot it could be I didn't have to let that trauma put me down so bad that I was willing to take anything, even though that's easier said than done. And I don't know if that's something anyone else but me needs to hear right now, but I'm glad I went through it. <laughs> now, something I like to lay in bed with while I'm partially naked that isn't a bad decision, uh, my laptop, watching Canadian Netflix, with NordVPN, probably my favorite transition yet. Yeah, let's go. So weird strangers aren't the only thing I now try to avoid in my bed, but also like anywhere else. But sometimes they can sneak in if the door isn't locked. So, all right, this metaphor is getting away from me. You need a VPN. If you use public Wi-Fi because it's unencrypted, hackers can easily access your information on any public Wi-Fi, making your social media accounts, passwords, your personal passwords, even your bank account info. It's all on the table. But Nord alleviates all that, encrypting your data so they can't access it. And not only that, but it gives you access to other countries. Kinda. I used this example last time, but I live in Brooklyn right now, and yet Brooklyn 99 isn't available which is a crime. That is until I go to Canada with NordVPN. So if you want to be protected, go to nordvpn.com forward slash Kurt Ritchie and use the code Kurt Ritchie to get a two year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. Once again, go to nordvpn.com forward slash Kurt Ritchie or use the code Kurt Ritchie to get a two year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. Much love. Thank you for supporting the channel. And uh, yeah, thanks. Oh, what's up, y'all? Yo, it has been a bit, but I'm glad to be back. Uh, man, I, I am so sorry that it's been so long. I got like an ear piercing, so that's, and then this one's fake, but I got, every time I'm like, yo, I promise I'm gonna make some videos, I promise. I hope you guys like this one though. It was a fun time to make. Uh, yeah, if you wanna support my artistry, uh, my very questionable thoughts artistry, please go to Patreon, help me out there. Um, it would be really appreciated. But really that's really i don't really have much i think that's all i got yo uh just much love to the patrons for uh, all the love um i got more videos coming out soon i've got a huge announcement at the end of june for july what's it may june end of june huge announcement i'm so excited about it's anime related so all my anime fans i hope you'll enjoy that but that's all i got yo much love i'll catch y'all next time um yeah peace